Continuing on the topic of history, we should note that today the federal government observes Constitution Day. Technically, I believe it's Sunday, but the feds are taking a holiday today. And some cynics would say very few in the federal government still really treat our Constitution the way it was intended by our founders. Let's discuss it as we're being joined now by New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Kevin Goodsman, also professor and chairman of the Department of History at Western Connecticut State University. His new book is entitled James Madison and the Making of America. Dr. Goodsman, we appreciate your time here on America Talks Live. Let's talk some about James Madison one-time member of the Ways and Means Committee in the House of Representatives and subsequently President of the United States, our fourth president, uh, with uh, the campaign in full swing. What do you think the father of our Constitution would think about today's presidential campaign? Well, one notable aspect of the current campaign is that both major party candidates seem essentially unconcerned with the chief feature of the Madisonian scheme for America, which is that the central government should have a few enumerated powers. The idea that the federal government is only uh, supposed to be cognizant of a few kinds of questions and most political issues should be left to more local decision makers in the state governments is completely foreign now. And yet there was great discussion, at least on the Republican side of the aisle, uh, many of us who consider ourselves constitutional conservatives do view the Constitution as a document of limited and enumerated powers, but subsequently over our history, it's been pulled in this direction and that direction, largely through executive action and judicial interpretation to become, quote, the living document of the left. Uh, James Madison did not exactly have a view of a living constitution as the modern left interprets it, did he? No, he didn't. In fact, he thought that if the people decided that the federal government needed more authority than was found in the enumerated powers, the proper remedy to that problem would be to amend the constitution and give the federal government more power. So, for example, in his very last formal act as president, Madison vetoed a bill he had personally asked repeatedly asked Congress to pass the bonus bill of 1817. And the reason he vetoed it was, he said, I told you that it was a good idea, but I also told you that if you found that you didn't have enough authority from the Constitution, you should first amend the Constitution. So he vetoed his own bill on his way out the door at the White House because he held to this idea that the people had only consented to have the federal government exercise a few enumerated powers. How much has changed in our nation to the point, and, and let's admit, politics can be theatrical at times and certainly emotional. This year, during the Democrat convention, Kazir Khan, an attorney who happens to be the father of a fallen soldier, took on Donald Trump and Mr. Trump's interpretation of the Constitution. Let's look and listen, and then I'll ask for your reaction. Donald Trump, you're asking Americans to trust you with their future. Let me ask you, have you even read the United States Constitution? I will gladly lend you my copy in this document. Look for the words, look for the words liberty and equal protection of law. Now, of course, the irony is we have subsequently discovered that uh, Mr. Khan endorsed Sharia law in the United States, but playing fast and loose with the Constitution, this is something modern politicians in both major parties have done. Your reaction to what Mr. Khan did there on, uh, at the Democrat convention, holding up his pocket Constitution as he did? Well, I think it's very common today in American politics for politicians or other people with political interests in mind to point to the Constitution in general without making any reference to anything specific. So instead of being a, a kind of cage around the federal government, it's become a kind of totem toward which people bow before they ask the federal government to do things that aren't among the, the federal government's enumerated powers. This is a, a perfect illustration of that phenomenon. And then you hear the delegates to the Democratic National Convention uh, applauding Khan's general invocation of the Constitution. Of course, uh, they were divided between a, 
uh, not very closet Marxist candidate and Mrs. Clinton, who doesn't seem herself to be able to point to any limits on the power of the federal government. I think that really summarizes the state of our constitutional culture today. People say, oh, I like the Constitution, but then they have no idea of actually abiding by it. And we will have to leave it there. Sounds like a great book, James Madison and the Making of America. Dr. Kevin Gutzman, you have our 